Hi, in today's series, we are going to talk about a very important issue that is relating to breast issues in women. And to speak to us about that, we're really glad to have with us today, Dr. Bertha, who has been a breast surgeon for more than 20 years. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Kelly. To get the ball rolling, how common is breast cancer here in Singapore? According to the latest uh, statistics in the National Cancer Registry, breast cancer afflicts 29.6% of women here. So that is almost one in three women will That's actually correct. get breast cancer at a certain point in time of their lives. Yes. So how common is the age group that we are looking at then? Well, um, the, the incidence starts around late 30s and it carries on postmenopausal. Mm. Due to our long-lived population, we are in the blue zone. Uh, lately, I've been seeing people uh, in the late 70s to 80s getting breast cancer for the first time. Oh, and when you mention it's premenopausal, which means in their 30s, does it mean that girls who are younger than that will not get breast cancer or unlikely for it to happen? Um, it is less likely, but I have quite a few patients, uh, teens to early 20s. So some of them have breast cancer family history, some do not. Mm. So with that being said, is it correct to say that if there is a family history of breast cancer or cancer of any kind, it is more likely for a person to contract breast cancer? So breast cancer is multifactorial. So therefore, uh, breast cancer family history will increase the risk of getting it. It doesn't mean it's 100%. Mm, okay, so there is an increased risk when there is a family history of cancer mm -hmm. occurrence. Speaking of which then, since that is the case and you have been mentioning that we are, you are seeing patients getting younger as well, mm -hmm. how do we look up for the early signs of breast cancer then? So, um, first of all, I believe that all the ladies ought to know what is their own normal. Mm. So, they will need to learn how to do their breast self-examination early. So, for example, um, everybody has a different size and shape. Everyone has a different consistency. So, how to feel is to use the tips of your fingers. This part is the most sensitive. The, the fingertips, the yes. three fingers, the meaty fleshy and part. And then you treat the breast like four quadrants, mm -hmm. and including the axillary tail. That means there's this section next to our armpit, that's the axillary tail. And you need to cover all of it and okay. draw circles so that you know when there's a difference in the texture. Okay. And oh. remember, Behind the nipple, breast cancer occurs in 1% of the time. So don't miss the nipple. For self-examination wise, you can do it once a month. Of course, the more you do it, the more familiar you are Correct. with it. Familiarity is the key. Yes, so that it's easier for you to notice detect a change, any, detect any subtle changes. What are we looking out for when we conduct self-examination of our breasts? First of all, you start with the visual. Mm. So you look in the mirror and check for your own symmetry. And then you can hold, hold your hands to your hips so that your breast is uh, projected or you can lift up your arms and see whether there's any tethering. So tethering means, for example, you can see a pull. So you can see a difference in the pulling on the skin. You can see um, skin changes like dimpling or what they call peau d'orange, which is orange skin. So if you don't know your normal, you won't be able to tell the change. So some of my patients, the very rare ones, they can get wrinkling behind the areola, which is that pink part. Mm. Uh, um, around the nipple, right? So you can get skin changes, you can see wrinkling, you can see things that look like eczema, but it's actually a rare form of cancer mm, called Paget's. Mm. So it's not just lumps. You can get all kinds of skin changes like this. And you can also have nipple discharge. It's more dangerous if, if it's from one nipple I opening. See. There are multiple, right? Mm. So it's from one duct, it's more dangerous. If it's blood stained, it is more dangerous. Once you are doing it at least once a month, mm. you should be able to find out what is the normal of your own breast. And some people are just born lumpy, so they have great difficulty. But if they know that they are lumpy, they will tend to go for screening more. Mm, that's also that's one also thing helpful. That. Mm. So, Dr. Berta, now that you mentioned um screening, when should ladies start going for mammogram screening? Uh, our breast screen Singapore would recommend forty years and above for mammograms. But for people with family history, if they have someone, for example, who had breast cancer at 40, they should start screening 10 years younger, mm. at about 30. So it's an annual mammogram screening? Um, for younger people, you may or may not need memo all the time, mammogram all the time. You can actually start one baseline, just so that we know. 
and then subsequently you can also use ultrasound. What is the key difference between going for a mammogram and an ultrasound? Do we have to go for both? Uh, usually, um, our Asians are quite dense. So in the younger age group, less than 40, uh, the mammogram cannot see a lot and that is why over here, we supplement with the ultrasound of the breasts. Furthermore, some of the breast cancer subtypes are not visible on mammogram and only seen on ultrasound. So therefore, usually we would do both so that we miss fewer cases. Mm. Only about 1% you need the MRI to detect it. Okay, so mm. we should start doing that even before we hit 40? Yes, so for example, there are a lot of health screening packages. If a lady is lumpy, it is advisable to at least get one breast ultrasound as a baseline so that you know what is it that the lady is palpating. Mm. So if you know, for example, that oh, all these uh, lumpiness that she feels is breast cysts, then you feel a little bit better. How curable and treatable is breast cancer in Singapore? Oh, I think uh, for stage 0 to 1, the cure rate is uh, extremely high. For stage 0, the prognosis is uh, almost like normal people. Oh? And uh, for stage 1, it's about high 90%. Mm. So, uh, the prognosis gets worse as the stage goes higher. So, it's very important to get found early, to be diagnosed early with stage 0 to 1 breast cancer. So, which means that since it is so important to actually catch it when it's early, why are people still not going for early screening or going for self-examination? I think the people who do are those who are already um, well educated in it and those who don't maybe just think that it will never happen to them because no family history or they think that they haven't hit the age of 40 or 50 and therefore they don't need to see a doctor or maybe they're so busy because all the ladies who are in their age range have children going to school and they're so busy with work and family so they don't go. I think one other reason is some of these ladies they get uh, breast cancer at a time when they're either pregnant or breastfeeding and they, they don't know the difference between a lump like, for example, a galactosil due to breastfeeding. Mm. And so therefore, they didn't think that they had to go and check. So it is possible to get breast cancer even when you are breastfeeding or Correct. pregnant? There are some patients who do. So it's, that's why I emphasize you need to know what is your normal. Mm. So as long as you know your normal, then you know when there is a change. But if you don't, you know, you'll be having all these compounding factors like, oh, is it milk? Is it a blocked milk duct? You know, should I see a doctor? Is it red because of mastitis or not? So whenever we actually notice anything change, any uh, change at all, even the slightest one, it's good to actually seek professional medical mm, opinion. Don't be shy. And not be shy and not to dismiss it. So in Singapore, like you mentioned earlier as mm, well, Dr. Mm. Berta, that lifestyle um, <laughs> in the bigger cities, um, mm. it is actually more common for ladies to get breast cancer. Mm. Why is that so? And how? It, what can we do to prevent it then? So... The statistics show that uh, Singapore's incidence is really high and it's similar to Beijing and Shanghai. So we are not sure whether it's because of stress, but many times when I talk to my patients, they actually do have a very stressful lifestyle. So I ask them to think about what they can do to give themselves a break. And some of them, when they take my advice, they actually do get better. Can we say it's medically proven? <laughs> Well, it's just that for my patients, I bother tracking them and I think I'm one of the few doctors that takes very detailed social history mm. about what is their lifestyle, what they do, what they eat uh, and that's why I have this kind of uh, story to tell. What are some of the golden words of advice that you have for our viewers? Mm, I think uh, number one is uh, be familiar with your own breasts. Know what is your normal so mm. that you can tell what's abnormal. Uh, don't be afraid of going for a mammogram because uh, the pain is very brief and it's not really pain, it's just the discomfort of being, you know, clamped between the plates. Usually it doesn't hurt much. So it's very minimal. Yeah, very minimal. Okay. Completely bearable, just take a deep breath and do it. So do go for the screening early, mm. um, do go for your necessary mammogram, ultrasound, conduct your self-examination regularly. And have a course, healthy lifestyle. Have a healthy lifestyle. Listen to our health promotion board. Yes. yes. And listen to what your doctors say as well. Alright, thank you so much, Dr. Bernard. You're Bernard. most welcome.